What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on SAT math from the Scalar Learning Channel and this is one that has been requested so many times and it is calculator hacks for the SAT. Now of course if you're familiar with the SAT there's actually two sections. There's a no calculator section and a calculator section. So obviously these tips are only relevant for the second calculator section which is the larger section 38 questions in 55 minutes. So without further ado let's do it. So calculator hack number one, of course, is that you can graph equations on the calculator if you have this nice TI-84. By the way, this is the calculator that I recommend. This is the calculator that I use with my students. So if you don't have a TI-84, I apologize. But if you can get one, I really do recommend it. I think it's terrific for the SAT. So check this out. The way that you graph any equation, you just go like this. You go boom, y equals, and already I got in here a y, 1 over x. Let's just turn that into a 1 over x plus 1. And then to graph it, check it out. You just hit the graph button, and boom, there's your graph. As a corollary onto this, you can find intercepts and things like that if you're trying to, if you need to do that in an equation. You can also, if you're trying to match an equation with a graph, you can graph the equation and say, oh, yes, this is the graph that matches. And now just as a little add-on, if you want to find an intercept, so this is how you might do it. So we hit second calc, and then you can go to any of these options. So let's say I'm trying to find a zero. That means it inter where it intersects with the x-axis, you can hit zero minimum or maximum. That's great for a parabola because you're trying to find, let's say, if you need to find the vertex, that will help you find the vertex. Intersect will be great when solving a system of equations, but we're going to come back to that. So let's say we're trying to find the zero. So I'm going to hit two. So it says left bound. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of move to the left. You see the button, it's hitting this one right here. You're kind of going to the left. So it says left bound. So go to the left of the zero. So I see approximately it's hitting the x axis here. And then I'm going to say enter, boom. And then it wants the right bound. So then I'm going back this way to the right of that intercept. You can already tell it's probably negative one, but let's do it anyways, boom. And then it wants you to guess, so we're gonna kind of put it right on top of it. Even if it's close, it doesn't matter. And boom, check it out. It gives you a zero of negative one. So that's a cool little hack that you can use to find these x-intercepts. Now let's come back and say we plot a parabola. We've got x minus four squared plus eight. So in this parabola, if you know vertex form, this actually Ha must have a vertex of four comma eight, but let's pretend we didn't know that. So we can graph this out and we kind of got the tail end. By the way, I'm gonna show you, you can go into the window and you can adjust this. Let's say I wanna see a little bit more. Let's make the Y max 20 and the Y min zero. So check this out. Now let's say we wanna find the vertex, AKA the minimum. So what we're gonna do is again, go to second and we're gonna hit calc and we are gonna go to minimum. Check this out. So I'm gonna hit enter. Once again, it wants a left bound. So I'm gonna move this to the left. You can't see it, it's kind of off screen here. Let's bring it over here. So there's on the left bound, it doesn't matter. So we'll say enter. Now we need the right bound. Let's go to the right of that minimum, like here, boom. And then we're gonna guess, we're gonna get kind of close to it. It'll get it no matter what. And check that out. It's got a minimum or a vertex at four comma eight. Now that seems to approximate a little bit. Maybe I could have been closer to get a more accurate read, but there you can see pretty much that the minimum or the vertex is at four comma eight. Last but not least, you can actually graph circles. It's a little tricky, but let me give you an example. Let's say that we have a circle equation, x minus four squared plus y minus two squared equals nine. Okay. Now, if you're familiar with the circle form format uh, for the standard form, this would have a circle with a, a center of four comma two and a radius of the square root of nine, which is three. Okay. But let's say you didn't know that. And the problem is when you try and graph this, if you come over here, you'll see it just says y equals. So it doesn't really give an option to do an x minus four, y minus two squared, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a workaround. It's not the cleanest. It's not the fastest, but there is a workaround if you really forget how to, what a circle looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna isolate the y. So check this out. I'm gonna have y minus two squared equals nine minus, and then this entire piece, x minus four squared, like so. Then I'm gonna take the square root of both sides, boom, boom, and then I have y minus two equals the square root of nine minus x minus four squared. And last but not least, I'm gonna add two to both sides. So y equals the square root of nine minus x minus four squared plus 
2, and now we can graph it. But there's something to remember. We take the square root, don't forget we have the positive and the negative side of the square root. So there's actually going to be two functions we're going to graph to get the full circle. But I'm going to show you what just one looks like first. So here we've got the square root of, and we need nice parentheses here, 9 minus, I'm going to put more parentheses, x minus 4. Four, boom, and that's going to be squared. And then we got to go like this to get out of the square root plus two. And then we're going to graph it. Now you're going to see this is not the full circle. It's going to be half of it. Now check that out. Now to get the bottom half of this, we do the exact same thing down here, except we do the negative side, right? So negative, and then we do square root of nine minus x minus four squared. Boom, boom and then come out here, and then again, plus two. Now we're gonna graph this, and we've got our representation of the circle. It doesn't look beautiful, it doesn't look pretty, it looks more like an ellipse than a circle, but again, that's just because it's stretched out here more on the x-axis coming across than it is on the y-axis. If I hit z square, you'll see now it looks more like a proper circle. Now it looks a little bit more even. And again, it doesn't connect for whatever reason, that's just a glitch in the calculator, but this is how you graph a circle. We can also solve a system of linear equations using the graph function. Again, I prefer to do it algebraically, but if you're in a pickle or you can't remember how to do it, check this out. So let's say we have an equation of negative x plus seven, and then we're trying to find where this intersects with two x minus three. All right, I have no idea where, where this is gonna map, hit, but let's take a look. We got the two functions, and if we're trying to solve the system of equations, we're literally just trying to find the, where these guys intersect. So once again, second, calc, intersect. And we're gonna say the first curve, sure, that's the blue one. The second curve, sure, that's the red one. And then we're gonna guess. Again, this part isn't so critical, but let's get it kind of close. And we're gonna hit enter, and boom, check it out. It hits at three and one third, and three and two thirds. So I don't even know if that was gonna come up. Like I said, I just picked this example randomly. But that's how you solve a system using the calculator. Now we're gonna talk about how to calculate the mean, median, and standard deviation on your calculator. Now again, the mean and median, there I would definitely recommend calculating them by hand. I think it's faster than what I'm gonna show you uh, because you're gonna have to input all the data, make sure it looks perfect. So if you know the calculation, especially for median, you can kind of figure it out just from looking at the data. I would recommend that. Also standard deviation, you actually never need to calculate the standard deviation. You only need to recognize that it measures the spread of the data and just really compare two different standard deviations of different data sets. So you don't need it, but if you're in a pinch and you need to calculate it because you just forgot what it means or forgot how to do it, this is how to do it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the stats button and you're gonna go right to edit option one. And now we have our list. This is where you can enter data. So let's say you've got a list of, I don't know, 10 numbers. We'll say four, five, 10, 11, eight, three, two, two, nine, and 15, okay, and you can see that's the 10th value, right? Because it says L110, so we've got our 10 values. Now again, I'm gonna recommend that you triple check your numbers because you make a mistake here, you're in big trouble. All right, so now we've got our list one and we can kind of exit out of this. So now if we wanna do the calculations, you hit second, list, and you go two to the right and check this out. Look, you can calculate the min, the max, but that's pretty straightforward, right? Biggest value, smallest value, mean, median, and we can also calculate our standard deviation. So let's say we wanna calculate the mean of these values, so I'm gonna hit enter, and then we wanna calculate the mean of L1. So we go back to stats, so we go back to second list, we hit one for L1. You don't need to end the parentheses, but let's do it just to make it look nice, and you hit enter, and boom, there's our mean, as simple as that. Let's say we wanna calculate the standard deviation. Once again, same dealio, we go here, boom, and then we put in that list, L1, enter, and there's the standard deviation. The next tip that you wanna use in terms of using your calculator is for checking values. A lot of times on questions, you're trying to figure out what is an equivalent expression? So this is a super common question type. Now, if you have an, ex, uh, an expression, you're trying to find the equivalent expression, what you can do is you can choose a value 
for x. You can say, hey, for, for the main expression that they give us, I'm going to choose a value of x of 2. Don't choose 0. Don't choose 1. I, I recommend choosing 2 or 3, something like that. And then use your calculator to do the legwork. Plug it in and see what it evaluates to. Then for the answer choices, plug in that same number all the way down for the answer choices until you get the exact same final number. Once you plug it into the right expression, you should get the same number as when you plugged it into the top expression and now you've verified it. So let your calculator do that legwork unless you're really strong with mental math and feel confident doing it yourself. So the next tip is we're going to be dealing with radicals and rational exponents. I just want to show you how to put in a rational exponent in case you need to evaluate one. You're trying to find an equivalency. So you can do it both ways. And once again, they may give it with variables, but you can plug in an answer, plug in a, a 9 or a 2 or something and evaluate it in the expression, the radical expression or rational exponent expression in the prompt and then compare it with the answer choice that you think is correct. So for example, I can say if I want to do this to 9 to the 2 thirds power, it's pretty simple. It's 9 caret, make sure you put parentheses, 2 over 3. That's 9 to the 2 thirds power, and boom, there it is. Now remember, 9 to the 2 thirds power is the same as the cube root of 9 squared. So how can I put that in radical form? So we're going to go to math, and look, they have something for the cube root, but let's let's pretend they don't. Let's pretend it's a, a radical that we, we don't know what the, or it's a different value than 3. Let's go to hit, we hit 5. Now check this out. I can put in whatever I want. So I'm taking the cubic root of 9 and then 9 to that power, the numerator. Again, I could also take the cubic root of 9 and square the entire thing. It doesn't matter. It's going to give us the same value. So now we're going to go boom, boom, and check this out. If we did it correctly and these are equivalent expressions, we should get the same value. And, of course, we do. Last but not least, we're going to talk about using your calculator to calculate trig values. So just so you know, the trig functions are here, sine, cosine, and tangent. This is the main thing that they're going to be testing on the SAT. And it's pretty cool because we can actually calculate exact sine values of certain angles. But the one thing you want to remember is in mode, when you're doing these calculations, make sure you're in the correct degree or radian mode depending on the question. I would say usually a lot of times we degree is maybe in some of the earlier trick questions at least it's going to be probably what you want to default to but if you're in the wrong mode you're going to get an answer that doesn't make any sense. So let's first start with degrees now we're going to quit and I'll show you for example sine of 30 degrees. Now this is a really common one in the unit circle and that's one half. You also look at a 30, 60, 90 right triangle that makes a lot of sense. But look, you can do that calculation really nicely. Likewise, a lot of times they'll be like sine of 30 equals cosine of what? Now, this should be memorized as well. But if you forget, you can trial and error and be like, well, let me see. It's cosine of, let me try 50. Okay, that didn't work. Let me try cosine of 60. Oh, boom, you know, based on the answer choices. And now you can see that sine of 30 equals cosine of 60. Just as an aside, Sine of an angle equals cosine of the complement of that angle. Another thing you can do as well is if you ever need to find an angle measure, so let's say they said sine of a certain angle equals one half, right? And you're like, well, what is that angle measure? You can use the arc sine function. So you hit second sine, so it's the arc sine, sine to the negative one, of 0.5, and you'd be like, okay, well, now I can know what the degree measure is to get one half, and it gives you 30 degrees. And that corresponds with what we saw up top. And if you do want to be in radiance mode, it's really not too difficult. You just go like this, boom, second quit. And now we can take sine of, let's say sine of pi, for example. So pi radians is like 180. Sine of 180 is zero. So just to show you, we'll do sine of pi right here, boom. And we get zero as we predicted. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click that like button. And if you want to see more from the Scalar Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.